Many variables of the body, such as your temperature or your blood pressure, have a set point. And the way the body maintains the set point is through feedback loops. These feedbacks lead to output, where the output can be negative or positive. So when a change in the body's normal variable or set point is detected, actions are triggered to bring the body back to its normal state. However, there are two types of ways the body can do this. The body can do this by decreasing the change in variable, which is the negative feedback loop, or by increasing the change in variable, which is the positive feedback loop. So both the positive and the negative feedback loops respond to change differently, but still will result in the body being brought back to its normal state. Negative feedback loop. So let me break it down for you guys. When a change in variable is detected, and remember a variable can be anything from fluid in the body, temperature, pH, or blood pressure. So once a change in this variable is detected, a receptor will pick up this change. Secondly, the receptor will send the stimulus to the control center. The control center can either be the nervous system or the endocrine system. Then the control sensor will send information to effectors. The effector will initiate physiological processes called a response to bring the body back to its normal state. Once the normal state is reached, the negative feedback loop will end. Positive feedback loops are way less common than negative feedback loops. Now, positive feedback loops occur when something needs to happen quickly. So an example of that can be found in childbirth. So we're going to use that as an example to break down how a positive feedback loop works. So first, the baby's head will touch the cervix. And in this example, this is going to be considered the change in variable, also known as the stimuli. The data is then sent to the control center, which in this case is going to be the brain. The brain will send signals to the uterus, which in this case, the uterus will be the effector. The uterus will then produce the oxytocin hormone, and this is a hormone that increases labor contractions during childbirth and controls vaginal bleeding after childbirth. The oxytocin hormone will then stimulate uterine contractions. This is going to be your response. Contractions will then move the baby's head closer to the cervix, and contractions will cause more stretching of the cervix. And remember we said that a positive feedback loop will result in more of a product. And in this example, the product is going to be the oxytocin hormone, which will lead to more contractions until the baby is born. So as you can see in the positive feedback loop, the body isn't trying to decrease the change in variable. It's reinforcing the change in variable. However, this feedback loop will still lead to the body reaching its normal state after the baby is born. But the body can't give birth to the newborn without increasing output making this a positive feedback loop.